Well, let's get started then. Um, and this is a virtual community conversation and I'm Lou Wilsey. I'm the Support Services and Communication Director at the Helen Plum Library. Today, our presentation will focus on the concept plans for the new library that's going to be located at the Mr. Z site on Main Street. The renderings that we will show you are initial schematic designs. Much of the detailed design work is still in progress and will be completed soon after the first of next year. So it's an ongoing process. During our plan development, the Lombard Village staff has been available to the library and our consultants, at, to our, the library and our consultants, and they've been answering our questions and providing feedback on the concept plans relative to vi village building and zoning codes and applicable stormwater regulations. We really appreciate their help with each of these important steps because it helps us to ensure that any issues that may be raised about the construction by you, the public, are addressed. The format for this presentation will include the opportunity for community conversation attendees to ask questions in the chat box. We'll try to get to as many of them as possible throughout the program. If we are unable to get to your question, please feel free to contact me via email, and that'll be included at the completion of the presentation. So let's take a look at the agenda and see what we're going to be covering today. Um, <clears throat> you can see that we're going to look at the um, background a little bit, the building design inside and outside, a little bit about the schedule and the estimate and the financing. Um, so let's talk a little bit uh, well, about our uh, background. After, uh, in, in November of 2016, the library did an assessment of the current building. And at that time, it was determined that the community's needs and the shape of the building uh, needed a library referendum tax passed. And that would fund a new building project and increase the operating costs associated with the new facility. We began work on design um, right after that. And um, we went back and forth a number of times, as most of you are aware, with the park district, uh, trying to find a mutually satisfactory agreement uh, that would not infringe on the air rights or, or the property of the park. Um, and we thought we had that accomplished in late 2018. And I, in our first set of community conversations that were actually held at the library back way back then, we presented the two pavilion plan that would be located on the current property. But after more than three years, we were still unable to come to an agreement and we began to explore alternative locations, including the Mr. Z's property on Main Street. In February of this year, after our board reviewed the financial implications, it was determined that we could agree to the owner's asking price and we signed contracts for both the 401 and the 425 South Main Street properties, as well as the small easement strip. Uh, this was in May of this year when we signed those contracts. And, and immediately after that, we began working on the design concept and communicating with the village staff. So with that back, background in mind, um, also note that many, many more details about the history of this project are available on the library's website at the next chapter um, blog post site. So now I'd like to take a moment and ask each member of our terrific and tireless team to introduce themselves and their role in the project. Claudia, can you start? Yes, I can. This is, uh, I'm Claudia Krausby. I am the assistant director at Helen Plum Library. And I want to take a minute and acknowledge Alex Vancina, our IT and technical services manager, and Christy Leslie, our marketing manager. They're providing behind the scenes support for these virtual community conversations, and we appreciate their um, support throughout this process. And I also, because the rest of the Helen Plum team is not here on this panel, want to take a moment and acknowledge their creativity, their flexibility, their dedication through these um, past few years and through this pandemic period. And we are so optimistic about their ability to bring that same um, set of characteristics forward into this project. So shout out to the Helen Plum Library staff too. Hi, I'm Fred Moreno. Oh. Go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead, Fred. Hi. This is Fred Moreno. I'm with Frederick Quinn Construction. Uh, we're the construction manager for the project. And I'm working closely with the team and putting together budgets and pricing. And we'll be working on uh, awarding subcontractors for the project. 
My name is Sean Kelly. Uh, I'm with the architecture group Enberg Anderson, uh, along with many engineers and uh, designers on the project, uh, landscape architects. We are uh, working together with the library to produce the documents and the design that you'll see today. My name is Nathan Van Zydam. I am also from Enberg Anderson Architects and am part of the design team. Hi, my name is Jason Cooper. I'm a landscape architect. I'm with the firm Environmental Consulting and Technology. We're a consultant to Enberg Anderson, and we're responsible for the design, everything outside the building. So uh, primarily site work and engineering. Jamie, did yep. you? And my name's Jamie Racklin. I'm uh, with Maristem Advisors. We're the financial advisor for the project. So we're helping the, the district with uh, the budgeting of the uh, cost of the facility, how they're going to pay for it, as well as the operating uh, 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 pro forma going forward so that they can afford the new library. Terrific. Well, thanks to all of you for your talents and your efforts. And now let's get to what I think everybody's waiting for, the design. So we're gonna start out today with the site. Um, after each of the sections, we'll try to pause for some questions, but, uh, and then we'll try to also go back at the end if there's any questions that maybe come up as we move through. Uh, we can always go back, uh, so don't feel like you missed your chance as we go through the presentation. So I wanted to start out and help everyone understand, uh, people who may not be super familiar with the project, uh, what the, the site is and where it's located. So the dashed line here represents the property that the library uh, uh, is purchasing. It's the old Mr. Z supermarket site. It's along Main Street. It's the east side of Main Street. North is up and just to the south of East Hickory Street. So the old, uh, the current library is up here, if you can see my cursor. And this, and we're basically looking to be along Main Street now. Zooming into the site, uh, I want to talk a little bit about parking and the site layout. So we've located the building in basically the northwest corner of the site. This is along Main Street. Again, north is up, and we wanted to front Main Street. General good design or best practices for urban design in a downtown area is to try to hold the street edge. So we wanted to bring the building a little bit closer to the street. We still will talk a little bit about the streetscaping that we have planned here along the street. And then uh, we moved it up to Hickory to hold the corner and the edge of the street. You can see the parking lot uh, wraps around. So we have an entry off of Hickory and we have an entry off of Main Street. And then basically we're, sh we're looking for about a hundred plus spaces. As uh, we refine the site, work closely with the village as well as the library staff and the library board, we'll be refining this throughout the process. But our goal is to definitely have 100 plus spaces. Also, you'll notice on here that we do have this uh, book drop drive. So you'll be able to come in, drop your books off, um, and then also, additionally, we'll have a service window. So you'll be able to come in here and it operates a lot like a pharmacy where you can uh, place a hold or reserve and then you can actually come up and retrieve items uh, from this window. They, in some of the renderings coming up, it'll explain how this functions a little bit more. Um, we have sidewalks, site access, and basically where the building is uh, on the site. Jason? Sure, thanks, Sean. Um, Sean started talking about parking. Um, I'll point out a few things that I think are beneficial for the program for the library with this design, but also the neighborhood and the community uh, as a whole. Uh, one of the benefits to this improvement is uh, with our parking, we're reducing the number of curb cuts or driveways that uh, intercept both Main Street and Hickory. So currently with the Mr. Z's lot, there's two driveways on Main Street and there's two driveways on Hickory. Um, we'll be eliminating two of those and moving the entrances and exits uh, further away from the intersection, which should help with stacking uh, for that traffic light there. Um, the uh, pedestrian experience, I think, along Main Street will also be improved. Um, as a longtime resident of Lombard, I've often been uncomfortable walking down the sidewalk on Main Street. Uh, sometimes people go a little faster than they're supposed to. And the current sidewalk is about seven feet wide and it's against the uh, 
curb there on Main Street. In our proposed plan, uh, we'll be looking at expanding the width of the sidewalk to about 12 feet um, and having a row of parkway trees uh, in the right of way that provides a bit of a shelter for the building, but also a screen for pedestrians as they walk down the road, uh, which I think will be feel a lot safer for pedestrians. I'll also point out that this development will be a lot greener than the current Mr. Z's site. Uh, I think probably everybody on the call is pretty familiar with that site. If you're not, it's almost 100% impervious surface. So impervious meaning those surfaces that don't absorb rainwater, roofs, and asphalt parking lots. Um, we will be greatly reducing the amount of impervious surface on the site to the tune of around 20,000 square feet. And that's all the green that you see here on the plan. Um, we'll also be increasing the total number of trees on the site. Um, right now there's about 16 and many of them are in decline or, or outright dead. Uh, we'll be removing most of those trees, uh, but we'll be installing a new 37 new trees, which will be a net increase of about 21 trees. Uh, we also plan to have improvements that help with water quality. So the reduction in impervious surface is very beneficial to the larger uh, um, water quality of, of the area. Uh, we'll have, just by the fact that we're reducing the amount of impervious surface, we'll have less runoff coming off of the site. We also though still plan, even though we're not required to, have treatments for that rainwater before it eventually enters the sewer system. So even though we have all that green space, some amount of that water will still eventually enter the sewer system in large rain events. So we plan to pre-treat it in the landscaped areas using a strategy called bioretention, which is simply a landscaped area that permits water to temporarily pond on it and filter into the, into the ground and infiltrate rather than running directly off. This also cleans the water of pollutants. Uh, Sean, I think that's about all I wanted to mention. You touched on parking and the placement of the building, so I'll, I'll send it back to you. Well, if there's any uh, questions. Can you talk about uh, handicap parking spaces a little bit, Sean? Absolutely. Uh, right now we're showing some handicap parking here and here. Uh, as we got through, as we kind of finished up the schematic design phase, we're gonna be looking a lot more into uh, the detail, the design development really brings us a lot, uh, our focus closer to the project. So we're gonna be evaluating um, handicap space uh, count as well as location and just maybe testing out a few different areas. But right now we've tried to locate them as convenient as possible. One thing I didn't note is that this building does have two entry points, one right here off of the parking lot. And then there is actually one on Main Street. That'll be easier to recognize and see when we get to the um, exterior renderings. Yeah, there's no more questions at this time. Okay, well, we can come back to these if anyone, uh, anything sparks questions as we go forward. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the exterior design of the building. Again, we're in schematic design, so these are some initial concepts that were presented to library staff and to the library board. As we refine these images, we're gonna to start to talk about what actual materiality it is. Um, we're gonna start analyzing the amount of glass to solid space. We are running energy models on the building to understand how um, the building performs in, in a in an energy format. We're gonna be doing sun studies to help us understand how the sun penetration, glare, heat gain, um, all of these things kind of get studied in this next phase that we're moving forward and we're excited to kind of work through that. But I'll start walking through different pieces of the building and then uh, hopefully answer any questions as we go. So right now you're looking south. So this is Main Street along here. We are in the northwest corner and then we are looking east along Hickory. So this is the northwest corner of the building. We located a nice um, glass element here to allow vision into the library from, uh, you know, as kind of a uh, advertising or some of the idea to see what's going on, but then also a lot, a lot of light and views to the exterior in this area. This does face north, so it is some of the best light. So we should be able to get a lot of great quality light in the space and really uh, have almost no glare. 
Additionally, and you'll see this on the floor plans as we get there, we also have the meeting rooms on this side and there are two doors here and we're looking at the possibility of providing some breakout space that would be kind of inside outside space that would expand the meeting rooms and the programs available. As you look at, uh, down Main Street, you can see this, uh, this uh, element right here. This is intended to be a little bit eye-catching, a little bit glassy, a little bit different because that's the entry off of Main Street. As we keep moving down further, we have uh, some glass panels here. And a lot of this, what you're seeing, this is a kind of a glass wall, but because it's, you're seeing some of these white shapes in here, this is actually some of the shading that we've initially started working with because this is West Light and West Light is the hardest to deal with out of all the, all the elevations. And we have a pretty big elevation here in glass. So this is gonna require a lot of study and um, is gonna hopefully uh, work through different types of energy modeling options for this area to not only uh, focus on glare, but on heat gain. This next image is from the northeast and we are looking uh, southwest. So you can see Hickory here and then this uh, in the background here, this is Main Street. So this is the main parking area on the building. We have our entry from the parking lot with that similar glassy element. We have some glass over here, but what you can see also is our book drop drive. So this is a two kind of lane, but it goes in the same direction. This allows you to drop your book and then um, scoot around these cars that would possibly be queuing for that um, service window here. So as you come up, you wanna use that uh, direct uh, kind of pharmacy-based service window for your library services. You could have some stacking cars, you can come drop your book and get around them. So you wouldn't be stuck in the queue. You can also see a little bit uh, better here, maybe the breakout space that we're working on with Jason, see how this can really uh, maximize the use of the library. Uh, and then you can see some of the greenery. It is, uh, we are making some significant improvements to just the whole overall site um, landscaping from what's there today. Um, can we talk a bit before you move on about the, since you're at that corner of Maine and Hickory, um, I think someone's wondering if there'll be any um, problems with traffic sight lines or something for people taking a right onto Hickory off of Maine there. Um, when we set the building or we, we cited the building and that maybe I could show if we have to go back to the site plan, we are actually using two different methods for locating our building. One is the city of Lom or the village of Lombard has its own um, site line requirements that we are working with, but also IDOT does. And I, even though this isn't an IDOT area, we're using the IDOT standards and the village of Lombard standards to locate the building so that we maintain uh, uh, we meet the requirements for both site lines for the project. Uh, another thing that I just wanted to point out is this, the kind of cream color material on here, this light tan. We are kind of planning this initially to be a masonry type building. So we're looking at masonry as our primary material, then glass, and then uh, there, need, there will need to be some additional materials to kind of bring all these things together. And we're, we're looking at possibly some metal, very minor amount of metal on the building in addition, but primarily masonry and glasses is the initial um, avenue we're, we're pursuing, but that will be discussed more as we refine the, the documents. What uh, materials are you hoping to use for the parking lot? Uh, right now it's looking to be uh, an asphalt parking lot, uh, and then it would be concrete curbs and concrete sidewalks in this area. We did, uh, we may experiment with some um, permeable pavers around the site, but we're still looking into that and really trying to understand the maintenance and life cycle costs related to those with uh, not only the library, but uh, we probably have some discussions with that with the village too as to some of their preferences. And in other sustainable ideas, um, how about uh, considerations of solar um, on the rooftop there? We're going to be studying a couple different elements to put on the roof. So right now we're looking at kind of a lighter roof, not necessarily as white as it's being rendered here, uh, but not a black EPDM roof. So we'd be exploring um, some sort of lighter colored roof as the base. Uh, in addition to that, we'll probably look at uh, what is the structural requirements and what are the benefits of looking for a green roof up here. And then uh, solar panels, we kind of do a layered approach to it. So in our base design, uh, kind of, no matter how we plan to proceed forward, we're, we wanna think about flexibility. So we would already be planning 
uh, the building to structurally support solar panels. This, uh, the structure does need to be increased to support them, but it doesn't need to be increased to the level of like a green roof would. So just as a base design, we would be looking at that. And then we're gonna study um, what it would mean to add solar panels to a project like this. So that would also include life cycle analysis. How much energy can you actually generate? What is the first initial costs versus, and then what are the paybacks along with what grants are available? So although we may not choose to go with solar panels this day, the idea is to make sure that if solar panels do become um, a viable option, um, you know, they may be based on our energy models because that is part of the energy model, but that the library can always have the flexibility to uh, grow and expand uh, in the future. Um, in the selection of the plants and trees, are, are native ones being considered? Yeah, I can answer that. For, for sure, we're uh, going to be relying heavily on both native plants and cultivars of native plants. Uh, though I don't know we'll be exclusively installing native plants or trying to replicate a diverse native plant community, such as a prairie on the site. And um, how about consideration of germo, uh, geothermal for heating and cooling? So we've done a few um, library projects with the kind of geo exchange system well, uh, wells in the project. And uh, Basically, that is similar to the solar panels. So we look at first costs, we look at long term costs, and then we try to understand maintenance as well as um, um, Kind of the, the efficiency of it. So that part of that is going to be um, Part of our energy model and part of that will be working with Frederick Quinn to understand what the costs are to it. And then part of that is actually working with different uh, contractors and different libraries that we worked at to understand more operational costs. So all of those need to go into that decision. Geo exchange um, for a library building has actually been on the fence on a few of our projects and, and it hasn't actually shown um, a payback over time on some and others it has. So it, it is really more of a, a case by case basis. And that's one of the reasons we do the energy model and we study the many different types of mechanical systems. But geoexchange or geothermal um, is typically part of our review process. Thank you. Um, I think that's it for all the questions for now. Okay. Uh, I have a couple more site images. Uh, so this is looking north along Main Street. So again, you can see uh, our entry in the distance here, this glass wall with some uh, initial ideas for shading elements, all of these things, we work through sun angle models, and then we work at daylight tracking. So all that goes into it um, in this next phase. These were some initial ideas saying that like, we know this is a, an issue and we need to deal with it. Uh, and then on the south here, we also have a, a glass area. We wanted the side of the building to look uh, pretty nice as you come in. This is kind of a gateway building to the downtown. This is south light. So south light is actually one of the easiest to control. So with uh, this would be more horizontal based where you can see this is more vertical based sun systems. But again, this would be another area where we look at heat gain as well as um, glare, sun penetration, uh, and how that affects the building and the spaces that are within that area. This last rendering here is intended to maybe show a, a more of a pedestrian view of the building. So along the street, trying to understand what that feels like, what that looks like, and then kind of imagining, um, you know, the glass, masonry, glass, masonry, kind of the rhythm and the layout of, this, of the building. Jason, would you like to say anything about the streetscaping in this view? Um, you know, I think I did cover it, Sean, with uh, the pedestrian experience walking along the street. We, you know, we want that to feel safe and inviting with the traffic on Main Street. So I think the trees and the planters do that and the added space for the sidewalk there. Uh, this image might be beginning to show how that works. Okay. Let me give a few more seconds before I move on. It looks like we're good. Um, no more questions at this time. Uh, the next section, I'll walk through the building layout. This should hopefully help you understand the entries. So um, sorry to confuse anyone here. That's not our intention, but now north is to the right. So Main Street is along the top. That would be west. And Hickory Street is along the right. This allowed us to get a bigger view of the, of the, of the layout. So this entry right here, this is the entry off of Main Street. You come in here and then directly 
uh, down from that is the entry off of the parking lot. So our intention is to align the entries and that um, if you come in from either entry, you kind of get the same experience within the building. Within this space or this hub that we're talking about, there's a couple features. We have a staff service point, we have some uh, restrooms available as well as some collections, and then the meeting room space here in the lower right hand corner. This is a 100 person meeting room that is divisible into two 50 person meeting rooms. And some of the other cool features of the hub um, that we're looking into would be having those um, different book, the, the new materials and, and the different shelving that they're on would be on casters. So they'd be able to be uh, portable and rolled away to open up that space for special events, gallery showings. Um, we intend to have a high end vending cafe that would serve some fresh foods and some quality coffee and things along that uh, line. Places to sit and kind of meet up with people, meet us at the hub at Helen Plum is you know, a phrase we hope everyone's saying, and um, it should just be an exciting community gathering space. As we keep going on the floor plan uh, in the, uh, to the left of your screen, this is gonna be the main uh, children's space. So the first floor is gonna have that main community gathering space in the hub. It will have the children's section of the building. And then I'll talk a little bit briefly about the, it has some staff space uh, to the bottom here, but the children's space, uh, we've located more of the, at this time, and we are still working through all this, but many of the uh, older elementary books to the south, these are usually a little bit taller. And then we're looking to locate some of the more picture books or the little kid books towards, um, towards the top of the screen. Our hope is that that will really increase and maximize views and daylight into the space, as well as some sort of um, interactive learning zone as well. In the back, we also have a program room. This is intended to be two 30-person rooms with, a, with an operable partition or one 60-person space. Additionally, I do want to point out that there are family restrooms available in the kids' department specifically, as well as a mother's room. I'm going to insert a little bit too. For any of you that are grandparents or caregivers or parents who have really enjoyed the current Robin's Nest, the design for the robin's nest here is going to expand that space a little bit we're very excited about that and there's also an area for our um, middle elementary school children to for us to focus um, an area for them within that youth services space and i'll sean if you can point that out it says craft maker but it's really kind of an all-purpose space whether it's programs for small groups or scout groups um, it's a wonderful opportunity to have a space that we have not been able to for that age group before. And I would also point out with this design, the meeting room that Sean showed you earlier that can be divided into 250 person spaces and the story time room in the children's area, that doubles our program space. Right now we have one area that everybody, teens, youth, children, and the public chairs so it's going to allow us to expand our programs and our events and give us a lot more flexibility as for the time and not just for library sponsored events but for the community's use of these rooms as well and last thing i would point out here too is that we have planned for some study rooms within the children's area that's right we have a couple of four and two person study rooms right now but as we evolve and make sure that these spaces meet the needs of not only the department but the community uh, I will go back and just respond to one quick question I saw here about uh, uh, handicap restrooms. So every individual use restroom uh, will be handicap accessible. There is no option to not be, so they will be. Uh, in addition, there are, is a handicap stall available in each of the main uh, bathrooms here. So as you come in, there would be one at the end of this row uh, that would meet uh, uh, accessibility guidelines for that. Uh, the last area on the plan that I just wanted to quick go is there is some staff space down here. So we have some receiving and maintenance spaces, as well as a book drop room. And here's the pickup window. Uh, the children's workroom and then the patron services kind of go along the, uh, what would be the east side of the window here, because this is where that book drop drive is. So you can see you can drive up here, drop your book, and then scoot around if you need to, or you can uh, stack and uh, have access to this pickup window, which would be also along. 
Any I want this question to get lost uh, about um, having bike racks on the exterior oh. off the pedestrian. Is That's planned, I'm sure, right? Yes. Uh, we actually had a meeting with Jason uh, earlier last week, and we are looking at possibly some bike racks along Main Street, but definitely have some uh, along the parking area. I think we just want to balance them around the two different entries and um, really, so they'll be in both areas. We believe they'll be in both areas. And Claudia, do you want to talk about the shelving? Um, you mean from the question we had last time? Well, there's someone's asking if it's going to be new shelving and, and is there going to be face out picture book shelving? Um, I didn't, I didn't catch that question. So, all right, yes, um, the plan is, and we don't know at this point whether all of the picture books will be face out or if it'll be a hybrid model, but absolutely there is a plan to have that, that face out arrangement of picture books. We're so excited about it. And the youth services team has been working on, on exactly how they will approach that, um, either all or in combination. The other thing, any of you that have visited our current library, we have known for decades that our shelving in youth is too high. So we're also very excited that the collections for our middle school and early, early and middle elementary will not be the same height as the adult shelving, they will be lower. And I think that will also open up more, more light into the space as well. So I, don't, I hope that answered your question. And someone is just saying how moms and caregivers will love this. So we're happy to hear that. We just started um, kind of extruding the plan up and starting to look at things in three dimensions. A lot more refinement uh, is, needs to be done over the next uh, few months. And I will talk about schedule at the end. But as we go through the design development phase, uh, this is gonna be some of the things that we're gonna be using, some of the tools to talk with the staff um, to understand the spaces as well as uh, what we're planning to do. But I just wanted to give everyone a little taste of where we're moving to in the next phase. The second floor, I uh, wanted to start where you'd enter. So we have a, a nice grand staircase here. We also have an elevator that brings you into kind of a small, we'll call it a secondary hub on the second floor. So uh, we'll have access to collections, we'll have access to some seating, um, possibly some quiet spaces. But this kind of hub or, or square allows you access into a lot of different things. We have the large conference room, which would be down here to the bottom. We have access to teens, which would be here. Uh, you can go into maybe a more quiet or, or more um, seating area and then directly into the adults. This floor is really uh, primarily adults and teens. And I'll talk quickly about teens in the corner here. This is the teen, the teen collection, Wells and teen computers. And then we're hoping to add in a possible teen program room or um, space where maybe things can be a little bit louder because it would be sh uh, we'd be able to control the acoustics better from the rest of the space. Uh, in addition to this conference room that I talked about, we are also looking at a computer lab and digital media studio. I know that Sue has some uh, questions about that coming up. Uh, the idea behind the computers is that we'd have a computer lab that could also double as quiet computing when in, when a class is not in session. But we also we will also have uh, public computers available in the main space. You can see the collections here, additional study rooms and seatings, uh, bathrooms on this floor, which are also accessible, and then two family restrooms up here, uh, specifically devoted to the adults. Um, and then uh, maybe just to round it, I can say that we're, we're kind of wrapping the staff. So we've got uh, the administration, uh, the tech services, and the adult services are also on this floor. Sean, I'm going to just add a couple of comments. The, um, the teen area will allow us to expand that teen collection. We know in, in our current space, it's, it's fairly undersized, um, limits how much we can put on the shelves there. So we're really looking forward to a little more space for their collection. And um, we've had some questions about, you know, the quiet space we have on the second floor uh, in the current building. And it's our hope that this whole second floor is a, a quiet conversation or quiet space with the expansion of the study rooms and the fact that we're now able to have the children on a separate floor. Similarly to the first floor, we're starting to expand up this floor. I wanted to point out this uh, multi-volume space that we're looking at over here. One of the ideas that we have behind this is that if we can move some of those stacks out of the way that Sue talked about before, maybe we could have some larger exhibits or really just kind of this uh, uh, very 
nice indoor space that would be kind of unique to, uh, to, to the public within Lombard. All right. Uh, we have one more floor to present to you. It is the basement. So we do have a basement mechanical space being planned. This is on the south side of the building uh, near our receiving and maintenance area. And then we have a little bit of storage down here too. So this is accessible from a stairway and an elevator, but the main um, air handling unit would be in the basement. Terrific. Um, so we talked a little bit about this creative space that is going to be available on the second floor. And we'd love to get some feedback from the community about what they'd like to see in that creative space. So we've got a two part poll that's, a, that's coming up right now. To access this, there's a little poll tab on the bottom, a P -O -O -P -O -L -L tab on the bottom of your screen and you can click on that and make sure you scroll through the, the poll to get to the second question till you get to the submit. So take a few minutes and read through which of the following features are most you're most excited about that you've seen in the library design. And then let us know which new services or features would you most like to see offered in the creative space. And these are both multiple choice. And we will also have this poll available on our website. So for folks that weren't able to um, attend this, they'll be able to give us some feedback too. While you're working on this poll, uh, I have another question. Why would the server area not be in the basement and give the second floor area back to the library? And maybe Alex, our IT guy, can handle that. I know he's on this uh, Zoom. He Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Alex Hansi, and I'm the IT manager at the Helen Plum Library. Uh, we, we had looked at uh, the basement for the server room in one of our uh, previous iterations of the design um, at our current site on Maple Street. And one of the advantages to having that on either the first or the second floor is there are some limitations on the length of the uh, cable runs that we can have from the server room to all of the parts of the library that we need to reach. Uh, we, we do have some limitations of about 300 feet on those runs. So having it more centrally located uh, in the building ensures that uh, we will be able to have that all run from a single central server room rather than also having to have a second network closet also taking up space on one of the uh, first or second floors. Um, it's also a little bit um, easier to control uh, temperature and humidity um, sometimes outside of the, the the basement area. So that's that is the primary reason that we are considering the current location. Uh, in addition to the fact that it's uh, immediately adjacent to the workspace for our IT staff, which will provide uh, easier access to the equipment in that space. Um, it will be a fairly small server room as we have been moving uh, more and more of our IT infrastructure to the cloud. We have reduced the number of servers that we actually need to house on site. So um, it won't take up a significant amount of space uh, on the second floor. Thank you so much, Alex. Okay, it looks like everybody's had an opportunity to weigh in on our polls. And so we'll complete that now. And let's see, people are liking the drive-through convenience. That seems to be consistent in all of the polls that we've had and we think it's pretty exciting too. Um, and also crafting programs and equipment is very popular, uh, podcast production. So thank you so much for your feedback on this and we'll um, be putting the result of the, all of the polls that we have together um, available for you. Um, here's a, uh, one other question. The current Helen Plum Library has a unique and comforting charm and feel that is different than many cookie cutter libraries that haven't been built in nearby cities. So I'm assuming that the question is um, seeking to see what will make this library design unique and how can we retain some of that charm in this building? Uh, so uh, one of the ways that we approach libraries is uh, community is, is really to involve the community as well as try to involve um, as many stakeholders as we can in the process along with the staff because uh, we're building a library for Lombard. We're not building a library um, for any of the uh, 
with I guess the exception of Jason, <laughs> for any of the design team. Uh, this is your library and we need it to reflect Lombard. And I, I think one of the things that we like to pride ourselves on in the design process is that uh, we hope that many of our, uh, that our libraries don't look the same because we, we sit down with staff, we try to involve the library in every decision that we do. We don't come there and tell anyone what it looks like we ask people what it should look like. And I think that uh, listening not only to the staff and the community is an important part of any um, public building that, uh, that should be ever built. It should be uh, designed with that, that community in mind first. Uh, and, and that's how we're trying to approach the project. And we do plan to continue to share all of the, as the design uh, development moves forward, we'll share updates with the community for folks to kind of weigh in to a certain extent. And um, the best way to get access to that information is you can view it right on the next chapter site on our website at helenplum.org, or um, even easier would be to scroll down the homepage of our website and sign up for our email newsletter and we'll have building updates, project updates um, always available that when they're coming out sent to you in your inbox. So now I'm going to quickly go over some of the schedule items and then we can spend as much time as, any, as we feel is necessary on it. But I like to start with this kind of project overview. I think this uh, the, the graph here tries to communicate where we are in the process and what's to come. So we've completed what is schematic design. And what that's really about is big picture ideas. We talk about adjacencies. We talk about levels of the building, what should be on what level, what should be on the other level. Where do the big departments go? How do we lay out things like the site? And the next phase, uh, this kind of orangish color here, light orange, this is really intended to be the design development phase about is refinement. So we take the big pictures and we start looking at more of the detail that we're doing. We, that's when we're going to start running our energy models. We're going to start understanding uh, the kind of the, the month to month operations that need to be done, taking a look at collection, um, buildings, really refining that building system discussion, sun studies, um, you know, trying to get a lot more specific on almost everything in the building. So we go from maybe the big view and we start refining it down. After the design development is done, and you'll see that in the schedule coming up when that, that's supposed to be completed early next year in, in January, we'd be moving into construction documents. Construction documents doesn't stop the design phase, but really the intention of that is to try to create a very um, complete set of documents that's turned over to the construction team to build the building. Additionally, that's when we start looking at at the, the very refined detail level. So um, making sure that we know how the brick is being tied to the building, what is all of the uh, assembly pieces that go into not only the how the windows interact with the building, but with uh, doors and hardware and all that kind of level. We also refine finishes, furniture, um, and the design process keeps going through construction documents, although we are, in addition, making a set of documents for construction. This little uh, green space here at the bottom, this is the bidding phase. So once we're done with the, the documents, we'll go out to bid. It is a public project, so it'll be public bid, and we'll be following the Illinois uh, public bidding requirements. And then this blue piece here that kind of takes up the majority of the second half, that's the construction time. So we've gotten through a very small portion of the, of the project. There's still a lot more refinement a lot more feedback and a lot more work to be done before we're even ready to go out to bid and then build the building. Here's kind of a, a general overview of our project schedule. So you can see where we are right here at the uh, end of September, beginning of October. We've completed the des uh, schematic design phase and we're moving into our design development phase, which is slated to be done early um, in January of next year. Then we move into construction documents. You can see right here that brings us to actually about April or May. What we also include in construction document is permitting, and that does take a fair amount of time as well. So uh, one thing I didn't want to think we skipped over anything is during this whole process, we are coordinating with the village. So there's a planning and zoning process that we're going through, providing documents to the village for review, getting feedback, and then incorporating that those comments and those ideas back into the design. Uh, 
so that that process go basically goes through both of our schematic design and design development phases. And I'm wondering if Fred, you want to say a few words about bidding and construction. Yeah. So once the uh, construction documents are completed, uh, as Sean said, we will be publicly bidding to be uh, advertised in the papers and as well as invites sent out to multiple contractors, uh, taking bids on each and every trade, and and then reviewing those, uh, and making recommendations to the library for award um, so that we can begin construction, uh, hopefully uh, in spring uh, with maybe some demolition of the existing site and preparing that for the actual construction of a new facility, which would begin uh, probably early summer uh, and then complete you know, January of 22, December 22. Fred, um, there's a question being asked. Uh, if in this process, is there um, a way to provide opportunities to businesses owned by people of color or women in the bidding process? Sure, it, it, it's definitely a public bid. So um, as long as you have the credentials of doing projects of this size and nature, um, you, know, you should send your information to our firm, uh, Frederick Quinn Corp. Uh, and we can talk to you, see what you've done in the past. There's a you know, qualification statement you can fill out. And um, we can uh, obviously advertise uh, the bid. Uh, usually it's the little bidder who gets the job, but uh, there's always other ways to look through that and see how that works. Um, someone's asking about the plan for the current library site. Um, currently, the library is, exists on that site, and we will be operating out of that site as kind of now our interim site until uh, uh, hopefully the fall of 2022 when the construction will be completed. Um, our board members will probably be talking about opportunities for that site sometime mid next year. Uh, we certainly want to wait till we complete all of the village planning and zoning process and we get through the signing of the uh, closing of the contracts and get to the other side of that before we start to take into consideration. And we'll also want to receive some uh, community input on what they'd like to see at that site. Well, I'm going to add just a note because at the start we said we'd signed contracts. Um, and when we talk about waiting until the contracts are signed, we're waiting to get through the contingency phase to assure that we can build this building um, within the zoning and building requirements. So contracts are signed with contingencies. And then um, the question about future expansion possibilities. Um, so that, that comes up frequently. So I know, Sean, you have some thoughts on that. I do. I'm going to go back to the site plan to talk about that. So we located the building on one side of the site, basically in this northwest corner for the reason of uh, allowing not only flexibility, but options to the library in the future. So the first option would be to expand horizontally and expanding horizontally is usually the most, is usually the most cost effective, uh, not only for construction costs, but operation. We still only have two floors to maintain versus multiple floors. So this would allow for expansion to uh, the east as well as expansion to the south. However, that's not our only option. And I'll go to a 3D view for this. We are also looking at, we've, we just started getting pricing back on the ability to expand vertically. This would be to add a third story to the building in the future. So what that does today is we make sure that we have the right foundations and structure in place, and that gives the library the option to do that. So besides, um, horizontally and vertically, uh, we want to make sure that the, both those spaces are kept clear and those options are available for future generations. Um, one thing that they'll have to think about in future generations is how a bigger building would affect um, uh, uh, planning and zoning for the village because that, that would also need to be taken into account. So our process in this uh, project is really just to make sure that those options are available and that if that needs to happen, that would be a future discussion with the village. Right, and, and it would be, it, right now it's just something that's speculative. So anything that would need to be taken into consideration about how that would affect solar uh, support, uh, um, power support and anything like that. And the parking, as you mentioned, um, you know, those would all be discussions down the road. Mm -hmm. 
And are we going to have lilacs in, at this new library? Um, hi, this is Jason. Uh, I definitely love lilacs as a um, card carrying Lombardian. So I'm sure we can sneak a few in. The planting plan has not been done yet, though. So we're just right now looking at massing, uh, but not individual plant species as well. Thanks. I'll move on now um, to the schematic design budget. All right. So we have the construction cost of uh, the actual bricks and mortar of the building, uh, which is the $20 million there. The soft costs, which is the architectural fees and all the furnishings that go within the building, uh, all the engineering processes put together, um, some permitting, different things of that nature. And then the owner cost, the land cost, the cost uh, based on all the work that has been done to date. And uh, we also included some monies should we decide to do a demolition of the existing building, but that's still up for discussion, uh, as Sue mentioned, uh, what's gonna happen with that site for a total project cost of uh, 27.8, which is uh, pretty much in line with our last discussion of this past January in putting the project together. No further questions at this point. We want to move on to the to Jamie's uh, portion here. Good. So uh, the financing plan will come together as we. I'm trying to get to it uh, as we develop. It's it's not there yet, uh, and it it will come into play as we finalize the costs of the project and the operating costs as well, because both are part of the overall budget uh, that we have to consider. So bear in mind, however, we do know a few things. Number one, uh, the cost of the project will be paid through a combination of funds on hand and amounts borrowed. And um, you know, since the library was, uh, the, the referendum was voted uh, almost uh, coming up on four years ago, um, the library hasn't spent the money that it's accumulated from the increased levy. And so all of that money or a good portion of that money is available uh, to contribute towards the cost of the project. The rest would be funded through bonds. And the cost of that debt service then goes into the, the library's operating budget and has to be uh, fit within uh, the other costs of, of running the new library as well. So we'll figure, figure out how much money the library has to operate the, the new building and pay the debt service. And then we can structure the debt service payments uh, to a degree uh, around the kind of flexibility that the uh, library and the community wants. So bigger payments uh, mean that the debt gets paid off more quickly. Uh, but it also leaves less room for um, things like operating the library or potential uh, levy relief, if that were in the cards. A smaller payment obviously makes room for more programming uh, and uh, a little larger budget for the library, um, but also a little bit more room if, if there were ever uh, to be considered levy relief. So. Um, those are all things that are kind of going to come into focus as we get closer to knowing um, more about the building and its cost and its operating needs. Thanks, Jamie. Um, so if there's any additional questions on the, the project, um, we'll wait a moment or two to see if anybody else wants to type in a question or two. Well, it looks like that's it for the day. And we so appreciate all of you Lombard and we thank you for uh, the ability to tackle this project for the referendum that was approved. And uh, this uh, a copy of this presentation will be available on the Helen Plum website early next week. And um, there is my email address, uh, swilsey at helenplum.org. Feel free to reach out to me. 
And uh, if you've got any questions that um, come up later and, um, you know, pay, just keep going to the website for updates. And as I mentioned, uh, a copy of this whole recording will be available on our website next week. So everyone enjoy the rest of your afternoon and go Bears. Thanks again.